Shalom, Ahab, Wa, Barak. First and foremost, Bahalala Yahala, Bahashim, Yahalashai, Bahashim, Bapakadad. Double honors to all the elder apostles and the prophets bringing out the 100% truth, risking their freedom to come out here and teach you, who rule well daily, who follow in the laws, statutes, and commandments, not just teach them. Now, the name of this class is called They Hate Those that tell the 100% truth. Now, if you saw my earlier class this uh, yesterday, uh, um, Dr. PhD Brown doesn't know the name. And when he heard the name, I, he went crazy. I started blinking all crazy. He's telling him how they're grammatically and morphically incorrect and the, uh, the pronunciations are all incorrect. What does he care? What's the big deal? If it's wrong, why doesn't he just laugh and move on? Because there's something to what's being said. Let's get it. So first of all, I wanted to start with um, the book of Exodus. And the reason why is because that's how deep-rooted their oppression is against us. Let me prove it. Let's go to Exodus 1, and we're going to read 10 to start out. Come on. Let us deal with them. Look, sorry, let me, it's a lock here. let me try again. Exodus 1 and 10. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when they're fall without any war, they join unto our enemies and fight against us. And so, get them up out of the land. The point in this is, come, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. So, when, when, when the prophets go out into the highways and the hedges to preach to the wind, what we're doing is we're building the, the temple. We're rebuilding the temple of Israel. So they want to deal wisely to keep that temple from being rebuilt so we don't come back into our rulership. So they hate those that tell the 100% truth. Let's jump over to the book of Amos. Amos. Chapter 5, KJV. We're going to start at verse 10. They hate them that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. So they hate those that are going to tell the 100% truth. That's not a joke. It's written. But let me keep going. Let me keep going, because there's a little bit more to this. I always just read that verse, but for a precept. But let's let's get a little bit more out of it. Verse 11. For as much therefore as you are treading upon the poor, and you take from him borders of wheat, you have built houses and hewn stone, but shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink the wine of them. That goes right back in our curses, doesn't it? But let's keep going. That's not what I want to get to. Of the points in, um, I think, verse 13. But let's keep going. For I know your mindful, I know your mindful transgressions and your mighty sins. They've afflicted the just. They take a bribe. See, the people that aren't going to teach the 100% truth, you already know it because they get paid to not tell the truth. And they turn aside the poor in the gate from the right. And through this bribe, they teach false doctrines and lies. And that's how they turn you aside from the gate. Let's keep going. Let's jump around a little bit. So by not telling the 100% truth, they drive the children of Israel away from the truth. Isaiah chapter 29, KJV. Um, let's go to verse 21.
Let's start at verse 20. For the terrible one is brought to naught, taken out, brought to nothing. And the scorner is consumed. Take the good wheat and put it in the barn where it's safe. But take the tares and bundle them up and burn them. They shall be consumed. And all that watch for iniquity are cut off. And all that watch for iniquity are cut off. That make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that repro reproveth in the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of not. So, um, how do they make men's offenders of the word? And um, they lay a snare. So, what is that snare that they're laying to make us offenders of the word? It's very simple. Let me let, let, let's get it. Let's get it real quick. Daniel. Chapter 8, KJV. Let's go down to verse 25. And through his policy also shall he cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but shall be broken without hand. The point is, is they make laws. They make laws against us. That's, that's the snare. That's the trap. And through his laws, he says, by peace, we need to make these laws to keep the peace in the land. But when you read into those laws, all they do is further oppress the Israelites. You've got to pay very, very careful attention to how these laws are written. They're all written just like the 13th Amendment. Everything is set up to take us out off of those littlest things. The littlest, smallest thing you do wrong, they've got a new law against it. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's go to the book of um, First Kings. First Kings chapter 22. You know what? Before we go to First Kings, I want to say something. Like I said, they make laws. They, they, they set snares against us. Let's go back to that. I just thought of something. I just thought of a whole bunch of precepts. I just thought of a whole bunch of precepts right now. So we need to, we need to address each and every one of them. Let's go back to verse 21 again. And they make a man an offender of the word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate. Now I showed you in Daniel uh, 8 and 25 that they make laws against us. In fact, they're making laws right now that you're not even going to be allowed to teach what the Bible actually says pretty soon. Legislation's going out. But this is by design. How long has it been since we've been allowed to profess ourselves as Jews? I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something right now. First, let's go to the book of um, let's go to the book of First Maccabees chapter three. So no, 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 wait. Second Maccabees chapter six. We're gonna start at Second Maccabees chapter six. Um, we're gonna go, and you know what? We're gonna start at verse one. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the law of their fathers and not live after the laws of Yahweh. So what they did to compel the real Jews to not keep the laws was they made laws against it. They made laws against being a Jew. Let me prove it. And to pollute also the temple of Jerusalem, to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympus, and that is um, Gerizim of Jupiter, the defender of strangers. So they took the Holy Temple and they changed the name to Jupiter of Olympus. On top of that, what they would do was sacrifice unclean animals on the altar also. 
all this in the name of, of Jupiter Olympus, of course, their God, not our God. We don't, our, our God has been taken away already. As you can tell, they're in our temple. We weren't keeping the laws correctly, but let's keep going. For the temple was filled with riot and rebelling by the Gentiles who dallied with harlots, uh, who had who had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places, and besides that, brought in things that were not lawful. There's your there's your unclean sacrifices too. That all falls in line. They weren't just doing one thing. The coming in of the mischief was sore and grievous to the people, for the temple was filled, like I said, with riot and reveling and Gentiles who dallied with harlots, who had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places. They're, they're, they're having hookers inside of the uh, temple is what it's telling you. So, verse 5. The, also, the altar was also filled with profane things which the law forbidden. That goes right into, I told you, they were sacrificing unclean animals directly on the altar. Let's get the point now. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feast days, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So they made it illegal for us to call ourselves Jews. And that goes back into Daniel 8 and 25. And through his policy, he shall cause craft to prosper. But let's go now over into 1st Maccabees, 1st Maccabees chapter 3. So now we know that it's illegal for us to call ourselves Jews. What happened after that? What did they do? So, we're not allowed to say that we're Jews anymore, but let's see what happened. This is 1st Maccabees. 1st Maccabees, chapter 3, KJV. Let's see what happened. Let's go on down to verse 48. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen sought to paint the likeness of of their own image it's written what do we call that these days we call it supersessionism or replacement theology so what did they do they made it illegal to profess ourselves as jews and then they turned around and they made themselves the children of israel they painted right over our faces physically and we've all seen the pictures we all know that this is the truth whether you deny it or not the truth is out there's no denying it any longer. But let's go 500 years after this. Let's move forward 500 years. And you know what? Let's let's read a couple more verses. Because I want to show you, they didn't just stop at painting the images. They brought also the priest's garments and the first fruits and the tithes and the Nazarites. They stirred up whom had accomplished their days. Then they cried with a loud voice towards heaven, saying, What shall we do with these? And whither shall we carry them away? For thy sanctuary is trodden down and profane, and thy priests are in heaviness and brought low. And lo, the heathens are assembled together against us to destroy us. What things they imagine against us, thou knowest. So all these evil atrocity things, everything, they, they've been doing it for 2,500 plus years already. So it's not just like since yesterday. Shalom, Akiyam. Shalom. Shalom, 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 shalom. Shalom. So, and he's saying the crazy um, uh, oppression that they put us through, only you know, Father, the, how, how horrible it is. So, now with that being said, now we know how much they hate us. They hate us so much that they took our heritage and painted their faces over it. Let's get back into it. Isaiah chapter 29, KJV. Shalom, Shalom. This is, uh, we're in Isaiah 29, we're going to go to verse 21. Isaiah 21, Isaiah what? Chapter 29, and verse 21. No, 29, 11. 29, 11. And the vision of all is become unto you as a word in a book that is sealed. This goes into the time where the word was taken from us because we didn't keep the law. 
which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, pray, I pray thee, and say, I cannot, for it is sealed. So we're in the time of the revelation. The word revelation means the revealing. So we are being revealed the truth. This book is no longer sealed. This book has been given back to the prophets. That's why Christians don't teach their false doctrine anymore. Two verses out of context, life story, hand out the offering plate. You know what they teach now? They teach, don't listen to those guys on the corner. They're reading the Bible. We read the Bible over here. I'm a crazy worship leader, bro. God called me to you, bro. Did you hear that, guys? Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, called him over here. I didn't call you God, because the I'm way, just a... Did you I hear him? What Hawaii. do I tell you guys every time? I'm Hawaii, bro. Namakani is the wind. So the wind will call me here. What, what do I tell you? That's what I say every week. We go out into the highways and the hedges and the we highways. preach to the wind. You are the wind. You are absolutely right. And I tell you guys that every week, the wind are the Israelites that are passing by that hear the word and receive it. It's and not a skin it. color. And it's believe it. And receive it with faith. Yes, in full belief. This isn't about a skin color. Don't you understand? I have white kids and I have black kids in my house under the same wife. So that is null and void. This is about the children of Israel that want to wake up and hear the truth. Now, let me get back to 21. They make a man an offender of a word and lay a snare for him that reprove in the gates. They try to trap you up, but you can't trap us up no more. We're back, and everybody can hear it, and nobody has a cloak for their sins any longer that hear what I have to say. Whether you accept it, receive it, or not, you heard it. Let's keep going. We're going to move around some more. I got you. First Kings, chapter 22. I'll be right back, my pastor. Shalom. First Kings chapter 22, KJV. We're going to go ahead and go right to the point on this one, I think. Yeah. I love this precept right here. That's like what I tell you guys. They hate those that reprove in the gates and speak uprightly. This is a perfect example. This is First Kings 22 and 8. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micah, the son of Amalah, Am Imlah, by whom we may inquire of Yahweh, But I hate him. He does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. So he's telling you, he told the truth. I don't want to hear that. You know what that guy's saying about me? Well, actually, yeah, he prophesied him dying. That's why he doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want to know that he's going down for his wicked ways. He wants to hear the feel good message. Give somebody a little money and think that he's saved. But then he dies an untimely death instantly. So no, you guys gotta come back to the truth to truly be saved. Let me keep going. Um, Jeremiah chapter 17, KJV. Let's jump down to verse 16. As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee, neither have I desired the woeful day. Thou knowest that which came out from my lips was right before thee. So what I'm saying is the truth. Be not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. So the Most High is going to be right here with me. He's going to protect me. He's been here with me the whole time. I've got a fleet of real angels that will put a stumbling block on you. You don't know who you're dealing with. I'm one of the real ones. I'm a real prophet. I came to say before because this place is going to be destroyed. And all I'm looking for are my people. I want my people to be safe. Everybody else, you are doomed. Let's go to the book of... Revelation, chapter, Revelation, chapter 11. I 
I want to go down to I want to go down to verse 10. Now there's a lot of meat in this, but I want to stick to the point. So, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall exchange gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented them on the earth. So what it's saying is, when they finally got us away from being able to keep the laws, which removed our protection, uh, the, the protection that Yahweh and Shem Yahweh Shai gave us. So when they got us to um, go away from the laws, they were able to put us in slavery. When they exchanged gifts, if you ever paid attention to history, the gift they were exchanging is they were giving each other slaves. Slaves for the field. Slaves for the house. Slaves for sex. This is not made up. This is the real truth. And this is why everybody hates it. And Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is going to return and he's going to destroy all of you. You better repent. Let me read it again. And they that dwelt upon the earth rejoiced over them to make and make merry and shall send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented them that were on the earth. And after three days and a half, after that 350 years of hardcore bondage of the transatlantic slave trade, that's the three days and a half it's talking about. So after the three days and a half, the spirit of Yahweh entered into them. And they stood on their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw. So in other words, that about almost a hundred years ago, we were just freed from slavery. Now, that three and a half days is over. We're waking up to the truth again. We're coming back into our own lot. We're learning that we are, in fact, indeed, the children of Israel that have been pushed down into the lowest estate on this earth. And the only people that seem to do well in this place are the ones that are completely engulfed in wickedness. You have to sell your soul to be famous. You have to sell your soul to put your music on the radio, to put your face on a television show. There's way more talented people out there than the people you revere as, as, as your uh, celebrity stars. There's way more talented people. Let's go into the book of John. St. John, chapter 15, KJV. Shalom Akiyam, Shalom. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem, Are you guys Muslims? No. Oh, <laughs> I just... Uh, I'm actually, uh, I'm half Jewish and half Italian. A Jewish and Italian, a Russian. So, do you, do you mind? Uh, these are for the uh, yeah, people on... Like that's only for... Like so, she's, she's Russian and he's Jewish Italian, so... We'll go with Romans 8 and 16 on that and say, we'll let the Spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That's how we deal with that. If you can receive the message I'm saying, there's got to be a spirit in you. Because most people turn their head and they are very happy to get far enough away to not hear the 100% truth. That's why they go to church. Church don't tell you nothing. They do not teach the Bible. If anything, the only thing the church has taught in the last 50 years is to not listen to the Israelites. Because they teach the Bible. Yashar Allah. That's how you say our name. It's Yashar Allah. The prince of a godlike power. We're the real ones. They don't want us to be back on top. They know what we're going to do to them. The scriptures are in detail of what we're going to do to our oppressor. But only the children of Israel that come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. The two-thirds are going to be trapped with the other nations let's keep going we were at um we went over to the book of john chapter 15 let's start at verse 22. if i had not come and spoke unto them they had not sinned that's not a garbage oh oh no i don't want money either i i don't take money the most high has blessed me beyond the shadow of a doubt and i feel bad to take anybody's anything that's not that's not what i'm here for that sounds more like it. 
I, I just can't. I can't take. I, I can't I, take I, anything. I'd rather give it to somebody else that could use it. No, I can't take anything. I the can't. Most High has blessed me beyond all. Uh, he's given me more than I need. I, I have a great abundance, so I don't worry about anything. That's good. And when He puts me in the balance, like everybody else. I remember all the great things he did for me and tell myself, if something happens, then I deserved it. That's all there is to it. There ain't no such thing as chance. So, let me read it again. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not sinned. But now they have no cloak for their sin. In other words, if you didn't hear the truth, you wouldn't know that you were, being, that you were in sin. But now that you're hearing the truth, You've got to reevaluate everything, recalibrate your life, and it's called application. You apply what you learn. That's where it says, well, I will show my faith by my works, applying what you learn. If the Most High says pray four times a day, what are you going to do? What time do I pray at? If he says pray once every other day, you say, well, what time do I pray at? You know, that's it. When, when do you want me to do it exactly? How, how high should I jump, Father? It's not about, well, why do I got to do that? If you start a fucking question with why, then that means you don't want to do it in the first place. That's the truth. But let's go ahead and keep going. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not sinned. But and now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. So if you're against this word, you don't actually hate me. You hate my father. Because I could come out here and say some bullshit and you guys would just love it. So you don't really hate me. You hate what I'm saying. You hate the fact that I'm upright and I'm telling the truth. Nobody wants to hear the truth. They want to get on with their getting on. But you keep doing that. Your time is almost up. Your time is almost up. Let's go backwards. Stay in St. John. Let me go and get, I, I should have got this first anyway. John um, 15 and 19, I should have started there. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So, you wonder why I'm always alone? Because not too many people can handle being around me for too long because I only speak from the book. I can't do anything else. I've tried. It doesn't work. I'd rather be right here where I'm comfortable anyway. This is my sanctuary. This is my 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 shield, my buckler, my cover of protection. I can go to this book and be safe from any of you and anything. This is where it's at. Everybody has been lied to. Let's keep going though. Let's go, let's stay in the book of St. John and go to chapter 8. This is your calling, bro. St. John, chapter 8, KJV. There's 144,000 of us. And believe me, they're out there. And you can go on YouTube. And I have elders. I got elders that I'm studying under that know so much more than me. It, you, it would make you, um, you marvel. You marvel at the great knowledge of the elders these days. But you know what they do? They shadow ban them so you don't get to see them. The Most High Yahweh Baha Hashem Yahweh Shah only lets us see them. They've, we've been shadow banned. I have a YouTube channel and I'll put up something stupid, get 8,000 views. I'll put up uprightness, get 13 views. On a daily. My, 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 my YouTube channel is like this, up and down, up and down. I'll do a short about it. I know what I do, I will do. I do shorts of some off the wall shit just to get your attention. And you click on my channel, I just want to see if somebody's going to hear the word and a seed gets planted. The seed has to be planted. We're, we're fishers of men. We're, we're gardeners. We plant seeds. Um, let's go, let's stay in um, um, St. John, and like I said, chapter eight. Um, we're gonna go down to uh, verse 45, I think. Um, yeah, I'll start at 45. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. And you know why? Because I'm not that rich dude that everybody reveres. I'm just some, the, what do they call us? What, what does the other camps call us? The bum camp. Nobody wants to listen to a bum. Nope. They sure don't. 
but they love to call names and tell everybody else not to listen to us. So you've got to ask yourself, what is the big deal? Why don't they, why don't they understand? Why don't they believe me when I speak? For, verse 46, which of you conceiveth me of sin? Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? So how are you going to convince me of sin when I have the truth right here in my hand? I have the truth. They, the name of this class is they hate those that tell the 100% truth. Who wants to hear it? Oh, I got to go and, you know, I got I got a lot of things to do today. I, I've got to go here and there and I, I've got. So your life is more important than the law, than the laws of taxes and commandments. So in other words, you're an antichrist. It, it's an antichrist. Um, it's an antichrist uh, um, mentality. It's a complete antichrist mentality because you'll put your daily life schedule before the most high and then justify yourself saying, I have to do these things. But really, you can stop everything. It leads people astray. It does. It, 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 that's the whole point. And that goes into, I think, Mark. Um, watch this. Mark chapter 4, KJV. So, well, watch this. This is exactly what you're talking about, too. Um, 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 let's go to 17. Mark 4 and 17. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Listen to this. And the cares of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So you're absolutely right. They do all this stuff, and what they do is they bring your consciousness back into a worldly mind frame. So you start thinking about, yeah, listen to him, yeah, he's right, man. I gotta pay this bill, and I gotta go do this. I got, I got a job, and you know what I do? I'll, I'll drop everything at my job to bring out the scriptures, I scared my own boss out of the house before. He doesn't want to hear it either. Oh, that's all it's religion. Yes, it is. And you know what? It's not. It's the truth. Religion is a has a Latin root word, religio, which means to be bound or held back. So if I was bound by some, yes, by the law. Held back? No. I'm increased. So I can't be a part of a religion. This has something to do with your eternal soul. Yes. When, when we are sent back, we go right back into the same lot. What that means is everybody's reincarnated. We all come back and we go right back to doing what we were doing before we left. So I'm right back in my lot right now. Now, just because you're sitting there right now, the Most High might be dealing with you on something totally different. But I was right there where you are five years ago, homeless on the streets. I, I, I was doing all kinds of drugs all kinds of alcohol, pack of cigarettes a day, and I mean every hard drug, I don't care what it was, I was doing it, and I was on the streets, and I was living that way. But when the Most High showed me His Word and unlocked my mind, and He showed me this truth, I stopped everything, and I came running right back to the kingdom. I stopped everything. So I know that I was called into this truth. Not too many people can break away from drug use. Cold turkey. Well, we all have our... Nobody's going to be able to just cold turkey, but we all do step away. A, a, a righteous man will fall seven times and they get back, back up. up and dance himself and keep on moving. What's, Never stop. No. But, but a righteous man's going to fall seven times. So when you come back into the truth, don't think that... Uh, in, in the first... In the first uh, wait... A Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1, My son, if thou comest to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Satan's coming immediately. He's going to come immediately when the word is on. that is verse... I got that right in front of me right now. Uh, come on. Y'all see this. Verse 2. I, I had it right here. Oh, let me try my hey, glasses. Brother, while you looking for that, can I tell you a testimony? Yeah. Let me know. I'll tell you a testimony. I have a living testimony right now. Let's hear it. Okay. 
August of last year, 22, this guy was whacking my head. Hey, he whacking hey. the back of my neck. Here. Oh, thank you, mama. Here it is, I found it. When he's done, I'll, I'll get it. 2022 of August, there was this guy at this park down by um, Star Pass. I was in a park over there. And he came with a steel bat and he whacked me in the back of my neck and he almost went broke my neck. And he whacked me in the front of my head and my blood was just shooting all over the place. And it was only by minutes that they would get me to the hospital in time where I never bleed out. But then I had to go do a surgery because the doctor said that if I don't do the surgery, I'll be looking at being a quadriplegic. So my, my neck, where all your central nervous system is at, was closing. And he was supposed to open it up. What he did, he infused my neck together. That's why I cannot look this way, I cannot look that way. I cannot look up and I cannot look down. But I cannot even move my hands. I had to learn all over again how to feed myself, how to walk, how to even raise my hands. And but today, I've been in bed ready for 10 and a half months. Two weeks ago, I told the Lord, Lord, I want to get out of this bed. And the Lord just came back to me and said, then get out of the bed. <laughs> Sounds about right. And then I got out of the bed two weeks ago, bro. And I've been going through all kinds of trials and tribulation, but I never stopped, bro. I never looked back where I came from. I only looked to the prize, which is the Son, Jesus Christ. And I thank you for letting me share, Pastor. And on the, um, the September of this month, this year, we're going to make a benefit concert at um, Tucson Park for the first responders. And we're going to take all the proceeds and we're going to give them back to the responders. And we're going to take half the money and we're going to give them to the church that is Bible believing. Holy Spirit filled by the word of God, not by just one word, the whole word. There's a lot of people today, they only like the New Testament. They don't like the Old Testament because they said Jesus will fulfill the Old Testament. No, that was a prophecy of him to come. He is, he was, and he is to come. And he said, I shall come and you shall do greater things than I have done. What is the greatest thing? I asked God this, I spent 35 years of my life in prison. And I told him, God, what is the greatest thing you're going to do that you never do? He said, now you get to lead them to me. I can buy them. You, can, you. You heard that. That's bad. That was a good statement. Now you get to lead them to me. And you, Pastor, I heard you from all the way over there. I couldn't see you. I never know what I was looking at. All I saw was the wind was blowing this way. <laughs> and I had to follow the wind. That is, that's beautiful. What you just said yes. right there was beautiful. And I'm going to get back to this because thank what he you, said Pastor. a few minutes. No, thank you for sharing with us. And, and I will come back. With, you got you to put one tip bowl over here. No, I don't take one. Yes. No, you got to. Why? God said, a man is worthy of his hire. That's right. If he blesses you, don't refuse your blessings. Because if you don't take their blessing, how the can they be blessed? What chapter address? Deuteronomy 111 says that my forefathers or my fathers shall bless you a thousand times. So if I give you a dollar, God's going to bless me $1,000. So no refuse my blessing. Let me bless you. And let the word of God come even stronger through this mail. Stronger. I'm a walking testimony, bro. So God is my I, shepherd. I actually don't I take money. I, I got like five cars, a bunch of gold and diamonds. I got, I got a big ass house. I just, I can't take from people. I can't. No, you take that money and you feed the homeless. <laughs> it says, hate the sinner. Help not a sinner. So I don't know. And it says, help the Israelites that are keeping the laws that are down on their luck. Do you understand what that means? Yeah, look at like, who's right keeping here. the laws? They're looking uh, right here. They're looking on the ground. They're so, looking for something. And, and, and if I have something, you know, I've noticed that when you give money to the wrong person, they do wickedness with it. And that comes back to you tw twofold. Oh, but it you says it in the scripture, if you help a sinner, it's coming against you twofold. Pure. Your so, heart is pure. Yes or not? We cannot judge people's hearts. Only God can. Any Either tips that are given to me are for you guys. I don't. I don't deal with all that. Oh, I, 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 I. The Most High already has me set in the kingdom. I want to wait for my reward, honestly. But let's get away from all that. Yes. Let's let's, let's go word. back to what I was saying. 
Can so, you take uh, back to Isaiah 21, 29, 21? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right back into the class. All right, go ahead. And then um, we're gonna go back. Um, we're gonna go back a little and then get back to the context. So we're gonna go back into St. John chapter uh, eight, and I'm gonna read 45 again. Can I have one people? Because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? Thank you. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? So th this is going right out to you two thirds. I'm telling you the truth, but you're still in disbelief. Let's move on. Let's jump over to um, St. John chapter 7. St. John, chapter 7, KJV. Chapter 7, what verse? Uh, we're going to go to verse 7. The world cannot hate you. What did I tell you? It don't hate me, it hates what I'm saying. I, I said that. I, it's it's, it's going to hate the Most High for His words. But all I'm doing is saying His words. Like I said, if I came out here and I said some crazy stuff, that, that you all agreed with, you wouldn't hate me. You'd be like, yeah, yeah, brother, yeah. But since I speak uprightly, you 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 hate you you think you hate me, but actually you hate the word. So let me read it. The world the world cannot hate you, but it hateth me, because I testify of it that the works there are thereof are evil. So why does the word why does the um, world Hey, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, because he testifies against the evil that is in this world. Job 9 and 24. The world was given to the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not him, then who is he? So he's testifying to you for your wickedness, and you know who you are. That's why you guys try to shut us down, huh? Because you can't handle the truth. They know. They try to shut us down. You think that the wicked elites didn't know this before we did? They they know this stuff. They literally, if you go online, you'll see that they are actually in real time trying to make it illegal to read the Bible. It's going to become a fine. And, and they're not wording it that way. They're calling it hate speech. So if the Bible so happens to say something that, let's say, the rainbow people aren't don't really care for, then it's hate speech now. I'm speaking hate. But really, all I'm doing is reading word for word the most bought book in all of history, in all of earth. I'm just reading the book. This book hurts. This book wasn't a feel-good message. It never has been and never will be. This book is about the children of Israel going into captivity and coming out of captivity. Following the laws and breaking the laws. Learning the do's and learning the don'ts. A lot of people do know what that Bible stands for, basic instructions before leaving earth. But what does holy say? Holy means holy? to be set apart. What is the, how do you, how do you break down the holy Bible? I, I, I don't get into the algorithms and stuff. He only, he only left you basic instructions It's a good exhortation. It's good encouragement, honestly, for um, people. So the, he's right there. Let me keep going. Let's jump over to Book of John, still, Chapter 3. And we're going to jump down to verse 20. For everyone that doth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So that's why they always tell you they do their deeds in the dark and they think, oh, he doesn't see me and uh, no one sees me because it's in the darkness. But everything you do is in the light. In fact, Yahweh's eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Let me get that. So you can't do anything in the dark. You can't. It's, it's being seen. Everything we do is being recorded. There is nothing that you have done that the Most High doesn't know about. 
and his eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. What chapter and verse? He said in judgment, well, our life will be flashed before our eyes, bro. It will be shown everything that we've ever heard, did say, even if we, even if we didn't say it, our thoughts, even though our thoughts. All right, here we go. That's uh, 23 and 19. Watch this. It's pretty amazing. Oh man! All right. Uh, 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 uh. All right. <clears throat> Fearing only human. Okay, so let's start at 18. The man who dishonors his marriage bed says to himself, "Who can see me? Darkness surrounds me." Right. So he's saying, "I can do this in the dark. I can lie. I can cheat. I can steal." Walls hide me. No one sees me. Who can stop me from sinning? He is not mindful of the Most High. So he doesn't think that the Most High sees him. He thinks he's really getting one over. Fearing only human eyes. Now do you understand? So he only is worried about whether these people around us can see us. Which doesn't make a difference whether you see me or not. It makes a difference whether Yahweh Baha Hashem Yahweh Shai sees me. And he sees everything. Let's prove it. He does not realize that the eyes of Yahweh are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Observe every step taken and peer into hidden corners. Sorry, buddy. You can't hide nothing. Nope, not from God. Not from Yahweh. His name, you know why I keep saying Yahweh? Yeshua. Yeshua is um, Aramaic. I'm saying from the Lashon Kadash, the original Joshua. pronunciation. It comes from Joshua. Right? From, yeah, yeah, Yeshua means Joshua, yes. But it is from Aramaic because it's Yahawashai is also Joshua. And what does Yeshua mean? It means he is the liver. Now, Yahawashai, clearly, when the characters of the Paleo Hebrew, which I study, it's Yahawah, he is Shai, deliverer. So, his, son, his name will be in his son's name, right? Is Judah one of his sons? Okay, watch this. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh Da. I know the name. I just showed you the name. You, that might be the first time that you realize that I'm telling the correct pronunciation. Now, my family is Cherokee. Where did the stone come from? The block stone with the Ten Commandments. It came from the Cherokee land. We know our language. This, the, these people out here try to tell us Yiddish, which is German characters or germ, German dialect with Hebrew characters. And uh, that's Yiddish. That's what Yiddish is to me. You guys, that's from Germany. And Aramaic is Greek or Roman dialect with Hebrew characters. And they've changed most of the characters. But Paleo-Hebrew, which is what I speak, which is called Lashawan Kadash, I speak the Lashawan Kadash. It is not Aramaic and it is not Yiddish. So it's not going to sound the same. And it's an older, in fact, I'm speaking the language that Noah brought over on the, on the, on the flood. And it has nothing to do with Aramaic. So, and I'm not trying to correct or anything, but when I hear the name, the name has to be spoken correctly. It's a spirit that was put on the prophets. And you shall know my name. So, and I will put my name in your, uh, in your frontlets, right? So, this name is a real important thing. And that's how you know who the real prophets are. Because only the real prophets are calling Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. You have to go to theologian school to learn Yahweh or Yeshaya or Yisrael or um, all of them. I, I don't even want to go into it. You already know. There's a whole bunch of different names, but there's only one Yisrael. true name. Yis, Yisrael. It's Yashar Allah. See what I'm saying? Yashar Allah. Prince of a God-like power. What does Israel mean? Prince of a God-like power. Yashar, the prince, and Allah, God-like power. That I can understand. Yisrael is just Israel with a Y in front of it. Yeah, uh, what, what is it? Um, is there no J or R? Ra, something. Uh, There's no J in the Hebrew. How about Israel? Isis, Ra, Baal. Israel. We're Yasha Allah. We're Yashar Allah. 
And when you go into the characters, what I'm telling you is the way it's correctly pronounced according to my people in the Cherokee land. So those people, my people, that's, that's how we say it. Now, there is different, and when you look at um, Aramaic, and when you look at Yiddish, and you look at Paleo, they look nothing alike. They have nothing to do with each other. They just don't look, I mean, there might be one or two characters that are the same, but when you go into it, nope. We're close, we're not, we're not close to really anything. But anyway, let's get away from that. That was yesterday's class. I actually taught a class yesterday on the name. That was the whole, the whole class about just his name because somebody tried to tell me or just said that I was grammatically and morpho, mor, morpho, morpholo, said I was completely wrong. So I had to do a class and then I had to break out the whole alphabet and show you I, I have it all written down, but that's a whole different class. Let's go into St. John chapter 3, and we're going back to verse 20 again. For everyone that doth evil hateth the light. I just showed you that Yahweh's eyes are ten times brighter than the sun, so you can't hide. And his deeds may be manifest that they are wrought in God. So he, um, he, he, um, I'm sorry, I, 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 I jumped forward. That his deeds should be reproved. So, let me read it again because I skipped lines. For everyone that does evil hated the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that does truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. And the word wrought means to be made, to be molded, to be manufactured. So when you're made, you're molded, and you're manufactured in Yahweh, it means that you are structured through these precepts. Makes sense. Does. Yeah, I like I like so to look up words. He's shaping us. He's shaping us into His image, into His likeness. Absolutely. So when gold is tried in the fire, do you know how to the I'll, goldsmith I'll, can tell I'll, when the gold like, is finished being tried? I'll, I apologize. Do you know how a go, uh, uh, a goldsmith knows when the gold is finished being tried? Uh, I think it's because like I'll, I'll give it away. There's, See, a, te there's a testing. He can see his reflection in it. Does that make any sense to you? It does. It does. For gold is refined in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So when I'm he always sees with those men. So, so when like he's how, like silver, like when it talks about silver or gold in Proverbs, I've always wondered what does that even mean? He's 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 turning you into the person he wants you to be. And once you start reflecting his works in your daily life, he knows that you've been refined. So instead, instead of saying like clay, gold. Well, he's so, molding you like when you're when you're rot, it's like the clay. So when he was rot in Yahweh, he was formed, he was molded in Yahweh. Or like the, like how you're talking about the clay, the clay is also molded. Clay. So can the can the pot tell the uh, what is it? That, can the can the potter tell the clay? Can the clay tell the potter yeah. what to, you know? So it's like, can you tell the thing that created you how to do stuff? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's get back into it. I got a couple more verses, and then we're going to shut it down. So let's go over to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs, Ooh. chapter 9, KJV. It is my favorite book. Wisdom. Yep. And uh, this is, we're going to go to verse 7. When we won't go, I, I could do a whole class on just this chapter, but we're just going to get 7 and 8. Okay. 7 and 8. Uh, he that reproveth a scorner, get him to himself shame. And he that rebuketh a wicked man, get him himself a blot. And um, I'll show you guys what blot is. It's actually, um, it's like getting a pass. Like, you ever heard of a ghetto pass? Well, I'll let you go this time. So when you, when you correct a wicked person, the Most High is giving you a pass for that. But he that reproveth a, um, a scorner, get him himself shame. Because a scorner is going to talk about you. He's going to make jokes. He's going to gaslight and try and make everybody around you think that you're lying. And get everybody to second guess what you're saying. That's why it brings forth shame. Because this dude's going to do everything you can to stop you. And and scorners, like, I've you know, ish that. talkers. I have seen that firsthand. Yep, they'll, they'll, they're taking the attention off themselves by putting all of this negative if, um, um, energy towards a different spot because they're the true negative energy so they try to push it somewhere else but anyway 
Verse 8. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. But you rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. So you put correction on a wise man, he's going to understand that you did that because what is it? Why would you put reproof? Why would you correct a wise man? Let's get it. Leviticus chapter 19, KJV. Maybe he thinks he's wise in his own eyes. No, nope, that would be wise in his own deceit. That's not, no. We're going to go to Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Why would we... Why, why would we reprove a wise man? Why would we do correction? And I'll show you, because a wise man is going to be another Israelite brother. It's not going to be somebody from the other nations. There's never going to be a day where the other nations are going to believe this book. They're going to put a stop to it at all costs. But let's go, let's get it. Leviticus 19 and 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So when you're putting correction on one of your brothers, you're trying to keep him from being in sin because <laughs> sin causes curses. And so you're trying to keep him from being cursed. So you that's why. See him fall. That's why, you yes. Don't you don't want to see him get dragged and, and have to go through through all that. We've Absolutely. We've been there and we've done that. You know, Suffer not we're sin try, upon we're him. We're going to try to make sure that the next person, somebody we care for, we love, to go have to go down that path. And that's absolutely right. So now we now we got a good understanding on what that's actually saying. So when you reprove a wise man, the reason why he's going to love you for it because he's your brother. Let's keep going. Amos chapter seven, KJV. Oh, we're going to go down to verse ten. Then Amaziah the priest of Bethel sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all of his words. So he's trying to put a stop to the truth. Like I told you in the very beginning, he's always, they're always, that's their thing. They want you to not know this truth so they can continue in sin. If they had not heard it, then they don't, they're not in sin. It's, it's all, it all works together. It really does. So let's keep going. For thus Amos saith, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away out of their own land. Also, Amaziah said to Amos, O thou seer, O thou seer, go flee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread and prophesy there. But prophesy not again anymore at Bethel for it is the king's chapel and it is the king's court. So he's telling Amos, don't even preach over here if that's what you're saying. We can't have any of that. That We want that filled with message. We don't want to hear about people being dying by the sword and led into captivity by the Assyrians or whatever. We don't want to hear that. What, but that's what really happened back then. You okay? You all right? I must leave. You were dozing off there. You left your stuff right there. You left. But anyway. So. And let's go back to it. For thus Amos saith, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. Also, Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go, flee away into the land of Judah and eat bread there and prophesy there but prophesy not again no any more at Bethel for the king's chapel is and for the king's chapel and it is the king's court and then Amos answered and said to Amaziah I was no prophet neither was I a prophet's son but I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit and Yahweh took me as I followed the flock. And Yahweh said unto me, Go, prophesy unto my people Israel. Now therefore hear thou the word of Yahweh saith, Thou sayest, Prophesy not against Israel, and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. So he's saying, Don't, don't say any more bad stuff about us. The reason why I keep reading it is because I need to get... Um, um, I need to get the point. Verse 17. Therefore thus saith Yahweh, 
Thy wife shall be a harlot in the city, and thy sons and daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land shall be divided by line, and thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall go into captivity forth of his land. Wow. So we're going to be divided by line. I can show you the map of America right now. No, it's already happened to me. I mean, it's already it's done. Already this, is, this prophecy has been fulfilled. We live in a polluted land. And the food you eat in your captivity shall be unclean unto you. We live in the polluted land. We're done for. And all we got left is this book, but nobody cares. And that's fine by me. I don't care if you don't care. I'm not here for you if you don't care. I'm here for the righteous and the sincere and the meek. The ones that want to go home. The people that love this place, they can have it. They can stay here forever for all I care. But me, I need to go back to the kingdom. So go, let me go ahead and um, finish this out. I got, I got one more verse and I'm going to close out. Thank you. Jeremiah chapter 20, KJV. I don't think she left. That's her. Oh, that's your stuff? No, this is not. She left it here. She left it here. If she does that, she does that all the time. Jeremiah chapter 20, KJV, starting at verse 7. O Lord, thou hast deceived me. I was deceived, thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do this better. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do you guys one better. Jeremiah chapter 20, the Living Bible. That way nobody won't be blamed for anything. <coughs> Watch this. I'm going to close out here, guys. We're going to start at verse 7, and we're just going to read through 10. Oh, Lord, you deceived me when you promised me your help. I have to give them your message because you are stronger than I am. But now I am a laughingstock of the city, mocked by all. You have never once let me speak a word of kindness to them. Always. It is disaster and horror and destruction. No wonder they scoff and mock and make my name a household joke. And I can't quit. For if I say I'll never again mention Yahweh, never more speak his name, then his word in my heart is like a fire that burneth my bones, and I cannot hold it in any longer. Verse 10. Yet on every side I hear whispered threats and am afraid. I will report. They say, I will report you. What are they going to report? Oh, that's right. I showed you in 2 Maccabees that it was unlawful for us to profess ourselves to be Jews. I showed you in 1 Maccabees 3 and 48 that they opened up the book of the law to paint the likeness of their own image. I showed you in um, Job 9 and 24 that the world was given to the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not him, then who is he? I showed you in Acts that it was not lawful for them to receive anything being Romans of the Jews. They can't keep our laws. They have had this illegal for over 2,000 years. Over 2,000 years it's been illegal. That's why it says, and I will report, they say, even those who were my friends are watching me, waiting for a fatal slip. He will trip himself, they say, and then we will get our revenge on him. There is no stumbling block before me. You will not be able to trip up the 100% truth. You might be able to trip up one of them church pastors, 
or maybe a Muslim or a Black Panther or, or whatever you think. But the real children of Israel that were given this law, statutes and commandments to go teach the, the to, to go out to the highways and the hedges to preach to the wind, you, there's no stumbling block that you're going to put out here that can stop us. The only stumbling block we have is when Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai says, that's it, famine of the word. And that, that's written. Let's get that and we'll close out there on that. Because that we're, we're coming to that time right now. We're coming up to that time. I keep telling you they're about to make it illegal. And there shall be a famine in the land, not of food or bread or wine. What chapter and verse? Let's get it. Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8, KJV. Behold, the day comes, saith Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the word of Yahweh. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of Yahweh, and shall not find it. So when you guys think that you're all high and mighty and this is dumb and you're mocking me, you're scoffing me, you're making jokes, I'm not real, I don't know what I'm talking about. I've been doing this for almost 10 years, every single day. I know what I'm talking about. I know who I worship, for you don't know who you worship, because you worship the devil. And how do I know? You, you celebrated Christmas. You celebrated New Year's. You had a great Easter. What is Easter? Oh, it's just a, a fertility goddess holiday. Astarte, which is a Babylonian uh, word. It's a plural word for any goddess of fertility. How about Christmas? What does the word Christmas mean before we go? It means death of Christ. Be merry at the death of Christ. You don't believe me? Look it up. Their words, they have definitions. Be merry. Cursed is the day of my birth. Blessed is the day of my death. There is nothing on this earth telling me that you guys are righteous in any way, shape, or form. You guys are all going down. You're, you're living a stumbling block. And with that being said, if you got the spiritual eyes to see, if you got ears to hear, I hope you got something out of this message. Shalom.